everybody. Welcome or welcome back to Crafts by KMW. I am so happy that you are here watching this video and I really hope you enjoy it. So this video is a request from a viewer slash subscriber. I hope she's a subscriber to my channel, but I don't know for sure. And she asked if I would do a video on using alcohol markers. So here it is. If you're not familiar with alcohol markers, they are made with alcohol, which allows them to stay liquid and stay wet longer than water-based markers. The alcohol evaporates slower, so you have more working time with the marker so you can blend them. However, this will be affected by the paper that you use, so keep that in mind always with whatever art supply you're using, it will be affected by the paper. For example, Hannah Carlson's paper is really absorbent. So you will probably have less working time with alcohol markers on that paper than you would on paper for, from some other coloring books. So just keep that in mind. There are a few cons to alcohol markers in my opinion. They are more expensive. Sometimes they can have a smell or an odor, although I definitely think that's getting better. Years ago, I used to get physically sick and nauseous whenever someone was using a, say a Sharpie or a permanent marker in the room. But now I don't get that way anymore and I think it's because they have definitely improved the quality and the smell of alcohol or permanent markers. And then the third, which I think is the most important, is that it will bleed through your paper. So if you are using a coloring book, it will bleed through to the back of the page. 100%, you can't stop it unless you coat it with gesso. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. But if you have single-sided books, you might not care if there's a bleed through on the back because there's not a page on the back. If you're using double-sided books, you will either have to just say, well, I don't care about the page in the back, so I'm just gonna go ahead and color. Or if you do, you will want to use gesso. So, here is the gesso that I have, and I've done at least one other video on my channel about gesso, so you can check that out if you'd like to. So this is by Art Basics, and this is clear gesso. You wanna use clear so you'll still be able to see the image underneath. If you use white, the image will either be completely covered or very, very faint, and you'll have a hard time coloring. So. You can find gesso in pretty much any price range. This was eight and a half fluid ounces for $10, which is kind of expensive. However, I knew the Art Basics line and most of the colorists that I watched using this in videos used this brand. So I thought for my first time, I would choose it too because I know it worked. But when I go ahead to buy another container, which I'm very close to um, being done with this one, I will probably buy another brand and get a larger container for about the same money. So now that I've talked about that, I will show you my alcohol marker collection, which isn't that big really. So I have a nice set of Sharpies. So most of these I got free. We have sort of a, a cool thing that we do at work. If you want to get rid of things, if you want to um, give things away to people for their enjoyment or to help others out, you can just bring it and put it on the counter in our break room for people to take. And I was so lucky that somebody dropped off these, these Sharpies. Now, some of them were mine, mostly black, but most of them in these really cool colors, like I got this nice peach color, 
and this really pretty light pink. So I was really over the moon about them. And I probably will start using them a little bit more now because I have all these colors. Those generally aren't marketed for or used for coloring, but they definitely can be, especially if you buy larger tips. But these are my collection of alcohol-based markers for coloring. So these are specifically marketed towards coloring, artwork, drawing, that kind of thing. So I have two mini sets and they're both by the same company, by Spectrum Noir. If you're not familiar with Spectrum Noir, they are a UK, England-based company and they are really a top art product and art supply uh, manufacturer. They make art supplies across all different crafts, scrapbooking, journaling, painting, coloring, and they're really known as a quality manufacturer. You can buy them on their website. You would definitely have to make sure that you check out the shipping and where they ship to and the costs. I'm sure they ship to the US, but it's probably kind of pricey. You can also buy their products on HSN, Home Shopping Network, which is where I buy them. You won't find all of their product range available on HSN, but you will often find products that they make exclusively for HSN, so they're not sold anywhere else. And that, I think, is really cool. And that is actually how I got these markers, and I'll explain that in a second. And then you can also find some of their products on Amazon. I actually buy their sparkle pens on Amazon. They are really awesome. They are a brushed base pen and the ink has sparkle in it and they're just so pretty. You can just color, use them over parts that you've colored in your books and it just adds a really subtle but beautiful glimmer and glitter and they're just really nice. So the two kinds that I have are the Colorista. So the Colorista are these blue ones. They're double-ended. So on the one side, you have a small bullet tip. Hopefully you can see that. And on the other side is a larger bullet tip. It's still pretty small though. So the Colorista line are their more affordable line of products, pretty much made for colorists. I think that's why they're called Colorista. They have colored pencils, different kinds of markers, they have all different things in their Colorista line. And then I have their um, regular alcohol markers. So these are their black ones. So these are double tipped as well. So like a medium bullet tip. And then this is a chisel tip. Now I have had these markers for, I would say at least 10 years. So I'm not sure that you could find these same markers anymore with the same look, the same colors. I, I really don't know. However, whatever they have now, I'm sure they have their higher quality ones and then they have the Colorista. So you can look for those. But one thing I like about their markers is, especially these black ones, they do have blenders. And then they, you can see on the top, this one is called YG1. So they have different markers that go together that are supposed to be blendable. So here's YG2. So you can use these to blend. And a lot of marker companies do that now to make the blending even easier and more convenient for their customers, which I think is great. All right, this container is a little small for all these. Okay, 
So the page that I have chosen to demonstrate on is a page from Mythographic Aquatic. And I am going to be coloring on the very first page in the book. If you are in the market for a new coloring book, and let's face it, what colorist isn't, this is a really good book to get. It is fun and whimsical and fantastical and very detailed and these books are so much fun to color so I highly recommend it. I do have a flip through of this book in um, total going through each page so if you would like to check that out you can check that out on the channel. So I am going to do the koi fish. I'm not sure if I'll get them completely done, but I'm at least going to start them and show you how I use these alcohol markers. So this page is already gessoed. So I gessoed it yesterday and I let it sit overnight so it could completely dry. Now, I'm not sure if you can tell, but the paper has a very slight texture to it. I don't know if it's coming across on camera. Some people don't like that with the gesso. Some people don't want the texture of the paper to be altered. For me, I don't care. I think it gives a sort of painted quality to the page, and it's not that severe where you will be like, oh my gosh, this is so rough, or this is really different and is not colorable. It's not like that. It just adds a little bit of texture because you have put something on top of the paper that is meant to seal and protect it. So for me, it's not a big deal, but if that's something that you don't want, you might just want to deal with the bleed through. That is everybody's um, choice and prerogative. So <clears throat> when I start to color with alcohol markers, I do a few things. So the first thing is I pull out all of my colors that I'm going to use on any one object or section on the page. So since I'm coloring the fish, I have pulled out the colors that I want to use. So I pulled out a blender <laughs> um, and then I pulled out this light pink. I pulled out sorbet cream, the orange two and three, and then hot pink. I'm not totally positive that I will use all of these colors, but they are the colors that I am most likely to use, so I pulled those out. Then, before I start coloring, I will uncap them all. I think that it's easier for me to have them uncapped where I can just pick them up and go ahead and color with them than to keep uncapping and capping them. You want to work pretty fast when you're using alcohol markers. Yes, they give you more working time to blend, but you don't get like minutes or anything like that. It increases it by seconds. So you want every available second to, to you to be able to blend your markers well. So I uncap them and I have them at the ready. You're not uncapping them for long. It's just a few minutes. So you don't have to worry about the markers drying up faster. I have done this with my markers for a long time and I've never had a problem with the markers drying out any faster than they would normally. So as long as you're not coloring a really big area, you should be fine. So another thing I do, I'm recap, I'm capping, uncapping these now. So another thing I do is I like to, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, I like to work from dark to light. I feel like if 
I put the darkest color down first, then I can blend with the lighter color. And so I'm not adding too much of the darker color. Sometimes I find that if you start with a lighter color and then you add your darker color next, you wind up having to cover a lot of the lighter color and then you lose it. So to avoid that, I do it this way. So I have all my markers uncapped. Another thing I would suggest is that you have a system for where you're going to put the markers that you finish using but will probably pick up again versus the ones that you haven't used. I do left and right. So I keep my unused ones on the right and then I put my used ones on the left in my book. That is my system. You could do whatever you want. You could use a tray or several trays or some cups or whatever works for you. But you just want to know at any given moment where the markers are that you're using and will use again so you can pick them up quickly. So I am going to start with the darkest orange and then I'm going to move to the lighter orange and then the cream. So I do one little section at a time to make sure that I have that blendability. And you can see how the cream is pulling out a little bit of that orange. It's exactly what I want that shows it's blending. And I go over it. Okay. So now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. The trick is you just want to work quickly. That's the trick. And I added a little bit more orange over there. You just want to work quickly so you get that blend. And the colors mix into one another. So that's the little snout. Now I'm gonna work with some of the pinks. So I'm gonna do a little bit of the hot pink first and then use the lighter pinks. And now I'm gonna start dragging this down into the orange so I get a little bit of the blend into the orange as well. And the gesso just creates a really nice surface to to be able to blend on. And now I'm just adding a little bit of the pink around. Okay. 
And I'm just gonna take my blender and just go over the whole thing. The blender just helps to soften it up a little bit. Even more. Okay. So there's that fish head. So now I will do a little bit on this one. This one I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna make more pink and then do the orange. So again, I'm starting with my darkest pink color. You don't have to press hard. I just press really lightly, just enough to get the color on the paper. And these markers, the Spectre Noir, are just really, really nice to work with. They are made for blending so they do that really, really well. And now I'm using the lightest color. I went over that bubble a little bit, but that's not a problem. I'll just go over that with my white gel pen when I'm ready to do that to do that and now I'm gonna use my oranges again so this one I'm gonna use just the two lighter oranges not the darkest one and I'm just kind of putting little splotches of color And then I'm gonna do the lighter one. And I just color right over it. It pulls some of that color, mixes it with this one. The gesso gives it a really nice surface to color on. It provides a really nice surface for the markers. Okay. I'm going to do something with that feather. I'm probably going to cover it up because this is a hidden picture book and I really don't like that to be honest. So, And now I'm just going a little bit into the pink area and I'm actually carrying a little bit of the pink back with me. And now I'm just going to kind of smooth everything out with the blender. The blender kind of re-wets the marker and allows you to work with it again. And now I'm just gonna add a little bit more orange in here. And some a little bit further down. And blend that with the lighter orange again. You'll find that you just want to keep adding little bits of color, going back in, and that is what's fun and that what what's makes your picture really come alive, I think. So there are my two 
fish heads. So <laughs> I hope that this video was helpful for you. Please let me know in the comments and give it a thumbs up if you liked it. If you have any questions or would like me to do a little bit more, maybe do a complete page with alcohol markers. I do want to do a color along within the next couple of weeks. So that could be something that I could totally do if you would like to. I would love to know what you're thinking. So please subscribe if you haven't already. And I really appreciate everyone who watches my videos. Thank you so much. And I hope you have a very crafty day.